All right, guys, welcome back. So round two, like I said last time, you know, just the same way as Andrea and I do things a little different, so do we. So I'm gonna try to stay as close to as I can, but there will be some variations, partially because I don't do some of those moves in my normal time, so I have a feeling I might be a little rusty, but hey, bear with me, let's learn some things. All right, you ready to go face down? Sounds great, thank you. All right, so we're gonna start by warming. I'm gonna start just by shaking out your partner. I know Danielle was on her knees, kind of using her hands to shake me out. Or should I kind of start up here? Good, very good. I like to just give a little compression to the glutes. As we mentioned, we kind of, during a typical session when you're working on your friend and you don't have time restrictions, you may linger quite a bit longer in everything that we're doing and really just uh, explore the area. But with us kind of moving quickly through things so that you can see a wide variety, I'm gonna move on. Do I'm actually, I'm gonna come and warm the other side as well before I go to, to palm press. Psych, I thought I was going down to my knees, but I am not. <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy you do. <laughs> so as I said, when I'm working, you find balance with how you're standing. Sometimes I'll use my hands on my hips. As you practice, your balance gets better. Kind of come in and explore. When I find something that may need a little more attention, I just lean in. Pressure good? Would you like any more pressure? Oh, no. Okay, good. You find whatever is comfortable for you as far as keeping your balance. If your client does want more, you can kind of just lean in. It's really interesting how just slight movements can make such a difference for your partner as far as the pressure that they're receiving. All right, and move down to the feet. Do some nice pressing. Oh, right, right, right. Left ankle? Yep. Bring my left ankle. Yeah. Is that, is that pressure better for you? Cool. You're welcome. I'll work my way up. Being aware that we have a recovering ankle. As I said before, whenever you want to lighten the pressure, kind of lean back. If your friend or client wants more, you stand over or put your weight over your palms and allow gravity to offer a little bit more. If I feel extra tension here, I might go down and back up. As I press, continue to press up her body. The hamstrings can take more pressure, typically. So I always make sure to keep my, my knees underneath my body. You see I just moved forward in order to not put my back in any strange position to cause a injury or strain. Also, I can give more controlled pressure when I am sitting over my hands. So once I get to the top, right below, oh, I was about to say the gluteal cleavage, but the cheek, cheek cleavage, pretty much. Put my knees right here. I take a deep breath in. And 
This is one of my favorite things. I like to move with breath of the body below me. You know, for some of us, our arms are shorter or maybe we have a larger chest, so we might not be able to put our elbows in the back, but if you can, it's really delicious. I typically come up and do some crossbody stretches to address. I say I like to move with the breath, being aware that there are ribs underneath my hand. Come up to her glutes, put my knees into the top of her glutes. Good spot there for you. I kind of just went all in and pulled my feet up. Same thing when you have shorter legs versus longer legs. This may be a little different for you. I kind of just lean side to side depending on where I'm feeling. A little extra. How's that right side feeling in there? Feels like a knee. More. Right? <laughs> it needs your knee in my glute. Uh-huh. that fall so deep and really deep that like sit bones area mm. I'm always sick I like to move slow you know I don't want to do any crazy shifting make sure I keep an eye on her side joint so as she showed kind of put my feet down and lean back in order to not put any strain on her. I'm gonna come in and put my knees here, her hand, at that spot. I'm gonna one more press, just because. Would you like any more pressure? No. Just hold. Allowing your client friend to breathe and relax. And we'll sit back. Oh, I don't need to stay up and have you bring your heels to your glutes. Mm, there we go. Heels to glutes. Perfect. So once you have your friend's heels to your glutes, stand up. Keeping in mind that she doesn't like a ton of pressure, but I'm going to bring her feet into me. So I know we're at a good place, so I'm just going to kind of hang out. Perfect. She's saying, just in case you couldn't hear, she's feeling it from her mid-back all the way down to her knee. I love yours. Oh, and she loves my knees too. <laughs> so I'm going to come down and relax. Sometimes I like to come in, bring a knee here, knee into the glute. And just kind of press. We doing okay with pressure? Oh. Kind of like Kitty making biscuits, kneading the body, encouraging it to soften.
You can adjust your knee to a new position if they want more pressure, which she doesn't, correct? But if you did, you lift the feet up, right? So I can actually lift both my feet up. I'm not gonna do that since she doesn't want it, but I just want you to know how to increase the pressure for this move. Specifically, you could pick up both feet. You could pick up one if they're like, oh, more in the glute, but I'm actually fine in the hamstring. You can just hold, you can knead. And I slowly come out. Switch sides. Give the other side a little love before we flip. Same thing, knee into the top of the hamstring, other knee into the glute. Hands across the body, offering support and compression. You can move slowly if, if uh, your friend, your receiver, if they are tighter, you can kind of just like switch back and forth, giving more pressure to the lower hand and knee or the upper hand and knee. Alternating compressions with your hands across the body. I feel a little resistance. I'm gonna kinda of find a spot and hang out for a minute, let her body receive. One thing I want to do before moving on, it wasn't done by Danielle, but I just want to kind of add it in because it's one of my favorite little twists. We're going to grab the foot, go across the body, take a deep breath in, and out. I kind of step back and pull. I like to give the body a little warm up, so let your leg be heavy, deep breath in. And I actually kind of regret doing this since you have a bad ankle, so I'm only doing it to one side. Might be able to try to hold you in the mid leg, but I don't know how comfortable you'll feel with that. Okay, so after you've kind of warmed it up, I like to come across, take one more deep breath. Put my foot in the QL and foot deep breath in. Boom. One more good breath. Move my foot deep breath in and out. As I pull up, standing up. Just shake and let the foot down. Now with this leg, is are you sensitive up here? Can I hold you higher? Okay, yeah, obviously being super careful of your calf. We'll see how far we can go with that. Or your ankle is what I mean, yeah, yeah. Take a deep breath in. And ah. Deep breath in, shake that leg out. And ah. Do one more breath in, let that leg be heavy, put in a QL and straight up, out. One more deep breath. And nice. Just being aware of your receiver as you lay their foot down. Let's go ahead and flip face up. I don't believe I forgot anything, right? Cool. Ooh, mic down. And that's why we put it on the side. All right, so I like to kind of start with a little warm up. Palm press in the front. Being aware of an injured ankle. So you can do it two ways. You can, well, you can do things many ways, but I'm using my palms along the inner edge of the bone. If you want more pressure, you can thumb press up. That'll be way more specific. You will know your clients that like that kind of pressure versus a more broad pressure. I would guess since Danielle had, doesn't like as much pressure, she would probably be more into the broad. 
Yeah. Might come up to the knees. Give some little circles. Yeah. And just come. Being aware that there's many muscles crossing paths under your hands. And so this could be a very sensitive area for some. Just being aware of the amount of weight that you are dispersing over their body. Keeping your knees close, not put your back at risk. And I'm kind of like leaning in and shearing out, kind of pulling the muscles away from the bone. I'm just palming up. And I kind of rest at the top and lean my body over just to kind of give a little more opening to the hips. As I begin to palm press down. I'm gonna move quicker to get out of this. Typically I would take my time, give some circles, and come back down towards the feet. And we'll come back to the stuff that Danielle showed us. First round, slide my foot in. I'm gonna come in whee, without bringing the sheet. I kind of use my toes to lift as I come in to give the pressure. Using my left foot to give a little bit of torquing. And if you feel like, oh, my foot could be in a better place, you can just kind of shift with your right foot to help your left foot. Being aware that your top of your foot, there is a bone. Some of us are bonier than others. So do be aware that bringing your foot directly in versus out will be a different sensation for your receiver. How are we doing there? I'm gonna give her a little shake. A little bit similar to the wagging we were doing while face down, but still it's a different sensation as I have the pressure going into her hip and shaking her out. Got a little more rotation across the front of her body to open up the front. Come in. Big, broad. In my mind, I was just thinking, beware of the person below you. The torque with the left foot can be rather intense, even if it's not much of a movement, as she asked me if I could lighten it up a little bit. So I always start my sessions by telling my receivers, you know, if anything is ever too much or not enough, feel free to have open communication. Let me know how you're feeling. I watch you to, to see how you're reacting, but there's certain things that you know that I don't know. So I don't take anything personally. As you're doing this, I have hands. I can use them. <laughs> That's the cool part. We can sit here and if I'm in like a compression in her leg, give her a little pull, a little traction. This is the beauty about Thai massage is that the number of spots that we can work at the same time with such ease, right? Client or <laughs> I like to kind of pick up the body with my feet. I gotta stomp around in here. Well, lovely stomp around with my 
<laughs> with my toe pads. I'm a little violent. And I'm just pressing around her glutes, finding somewhere that may have some tension. Holding where you find some tension. Go and grab her leg. Bring some circles. I like to do some full hip, deep breath in and out. You see with my leg, my left leg bent, I'm using that to rotate and lean towards, so I'm not putting my back at risk. Slap with our knee here. We'll give her a nice stretch. And deep breath in. And I really like working with breath. Do stretches, deep breath. Better there. Once they're in this position, this is what I have not done in a while, I believe. But yeah, I will just sit back, love on her leg. Perfect. Oh yeah, so oh, yeah. There we go. And then we just lean back. And I'm blanking on what you did after that. I feel I know there was something where you were, where you were here. You were doing something where you were pushing across. Uh huh. Did you just do both at the same time? Uh -huh. Ah, I was thinking it was. Yep. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna give a little extra just so you guys can try this. So I have my foot across. Like so. Mm -hmm. So this is using my foot to hold her leg down in case her flexors are too tight, just in case you couldn't hear. I'm not quite sure how this recording will work. I think it should pick her up, but just in case I want to repeat some things. Oh, it's nice. Let her Let go down. I have a thing. I always like to kind of open the hips. I just want to give a little open before I move to the other side. After we just closed everything off. I find it's always interesting how much the quads have to do with the back pain. Pulling down. We won't even really feel it. Until we start squishing around. We're like, oh, hey, that's tender. <sighs> Gently bring her leg back to center. Give a little traction. And let's go to the other side. Once again, I'm gonna slide my foot under. Do a little shaking. Once you feel like you're all shook up, go ahead and go in for some compressions. Using your bottom foot to give a little torque. Use my toes to push up. My bottom foot too much. Okay. Right now I have my bottom foot, it's kind of like this. So I wasn't sure if I needed to open it to get off the bone. I'm actually gonna rotate myself up a little bit to be at a better angle for the compressions. I could feel I wasn't able to get close enough, but you can see now by her facial expression, that's a little more intense. And also I have a lot more control just by moving up 
two inches. Yeah, I'm more in line. And as I'm lifting her, I'm just very slowly. Typically, if we're doing this kind of work, it's because our receiver might have some SI, low back instability. So quick movements have the possibility to lock, kind of make you react in a way to protect, which would be counterproductive for what we're trying to do here. After you've received this, you understand that though this is boring to watch, you're watching it, you don't think it's a lot going on. But to actually sit here and to receive compressions down the IT band is phenomenal. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so I use, to get my foot out from under, I slide my left foot here and just gracefully slide out. I like to come back up using my toes to lift her body and just kind of knead her hip, her glutes. Finding somewhere good, you can kind of sink in. When I'm first going to work a muscle, I move slower. To give that body, that part of her body, some time to receive and welcome the work. And sliding out. Come from here. I slide with my left hand under her knee, my right hand at her foot. This is the one that, this is not the one, it was the other one, it was the sprained one, huh? Your yeah. left? Yeah. Okay. Good, good. I love that I worked that whole last side, not, I'm not hurting you. All right, so as I'm standing here, using my right knee as my stability, take a deep breath in. And deep breath. And deep breath. And out as I rest the foot near her knee and allow for a stretch. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and stretch down the body. Deep breath. And she's done, people. <laughs> All right, so as she is in this position, I once again come in with my knee. We'll see if I can do it right this time. The first time. Feel like I'm in the right place this time. Coming with her knee. I do something weird, aren't I? I'm, I'm facing the wrong way, actually. <laughs> and sometimes that will even happen. Even if you've been doing this for a while, you might get turned around. It's not a big deal. They actually don't, your client will not care because they are mush. And we are all human. All right, so you see I just adjusted 90 degrees. My body was at a weird angle and it wasn't quite getting my knee where it needed to in her glutes. I just readjusted as I'm opening. You will do some things that might be a little rusty to you, but you will quickly realize this won't work. <laughs> let, me, let me adjust my body a little bit. Everyone's a little bit different, whether our height or size, so in the way we all fit together. I'm going to come in with my foot to give a little resistance. There we go. And actually this time as I move out, oof, I didn't mean to set her down that quickly. We're good. So another way to open that hip. Maybe just to kind of give a little hip opening before you set it down. Just to reopen since we just closed. 
a little much on the this yeah. okay it's okay and we'll come back down offering some traction you can even come in and give a little whoop. Get a little calf stretch while we're here. Why not, right? You can straight. Oh, is that bad on your? Uh, you doing okay? Perfect. And come up, bend your knees for me. And one moment, just stand up. I like to kind of open the low back first. Act like you're dancing in sixth grade, a little side to side. You can lean to one side versus the other, being aware of what's going on below you. After feeling like you've done enough of that, cross the legs of your receiver and just lean in, getting the low back a stretch. Do not just plop yourself down. This is very intense to receive, especially if you have SI low back issues. So just gently let gravity disperse. Words. Come out slowly. A little traction. Oh. At this point, I'd probably do a little bit more to the feet, just opening the body. There's so many options of things that we can do. It's really, it's really fun that every session can be different because there's just so such, such a variety of ways you can approach things and just different ways that you can do it. So thank you so much for joining us today.